everyone. Right now, it is the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> so blessed to have my daughter call me up and ask me, would you like us to come over and help you clean up your yard? I, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I'd love that. And so, yeah, she came over with her family and we all just got to work raking and raking and weeding. So anyways, I thought I'd take you outside and I'd show you a little bit of what, or I should say, how I was blessed. I know that the sun is shining really bright, and I certainly hope that you'll be able to see, but all of this area was just covered in like three or four inches of dead leaves. So the the hosta there and the, the daylilies, they were, they were struggling just a little bit. So as you can see, there's more hosta there that were trying to come up and daylilies back there. So all of it got cleared out. And all this beautiful pachysandra, it's all been cleaned out and on down the side of my house here has all been cleaned out. In this area, even though right now, you really can't see that there is a dividing line between what is my garden and what is the woods. But when all the green starts coming in, you will definitely see the dividing line. But this entire area was totally covered with, oh my goodness, I bet you it was six inches deep of leaves. So all of that got raked out. And I'll show you down here. And then all through here, and you can see the little the little uh, bits of plants, like that's a hosta, and there's some other plants in there. I'm not really sure what all of them are now, but they've all been cleared out so that they can begin to grow. And they were trying, but they were struggling. In this island area in the front of my yard, this was another area that was just had a lot of leaves and that and yeah they got all that raked up too and here is my bleeding heart look at how beautiful that is growing I that's just a special plant if you've watched any of my other videos you know that I had bought two bleeding hearts. I put one at my son Timmy's grave and I brought this one home here, planted it in this pot and it has been growing now in this pot since the year 2000. So as you can see I was very blessed and yeah we were all out there raking and cleaning and getting everything cleaned up and oh, I got hot, I got sweaty, and I felt like there were bugs all over me. So when they left, I jumped in the shower. So yeah, that's kind of why I look like this in the middle of the afternoon, you know, my hair is still wet and I can't really go in the bedroom because Rick's sleeping in the bedroom because he's got to work tonight. But anyways, I hope that, yeah, you enjoyed seeing a little bit of my family's hard work. And I'll talk to all of you in just a little bit. For today's devotion, we will be reading in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. This is a great statement because we are being told what the end and the goal of God is. Now, most of us would say that the goal of the church is the Great Commission. Now, please listen carefully, because I do not want to be accused of saying that I don't believe that evangelism is important. I strongly 
believe that the Great Commission is essential and must be accomplished. However, the paramount thing, the thing God is after above all else is for us to mature in Christ and to fulfill what God had in mind when he made mankind in the first place, which is to be mature, to grow up as responsible, well-adjusted, wholehearted people, just as God intended us to be. Deep down at the deepest level of our heart, isn't that what each of us desire? To be a whole person, to be mature in Christ, to fulfill what God has put into us and to do exactly what the Lord wants us to do. Yet, we all have a mental image of ourselves. We like to think of ourselves as mature or maturing much more probably than we really are. You see, we have an innate ability to deceive ourselves and to help prove my point. At times, we can be brutally honest with ourselves and even describe ourselves as stubborn and foolish. But, have someone affirm or tell us that we are stubborn and foolish. And let's see what our reaction would be. We have this inner belief that we're mature or we're approaching maturity because that is what we so desperately want. That is what we are basically made for. But notice that our verse says, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Yeah, most of us have the wrong measuring stick. We're using the world's measuring stick, and that is totally wrong. When we use their measuring stick, we find that we're able to measure up pretty good because the measuring stick of the world is measuring ourselves to each other. And how often will we consider someone else that's less mature than ourselves and think, well, at least I'm not like so-and-so, but we're using the wrong measuring stick. Now, while I was preparing this devotion, I read a story about a little boy that went to his mother and said, guess what? I'm eight feet, four inches tall. Well, his mother, a little surprised, questioned him on it and found that he was using a six inch ruler. He was actually a four feet, two inches tall. Now that is the problem. We measure ourselves by one another. Yet, if we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, when we measure ourselves by one another and compare ourselves with one another, we are without understanding. For there is only one accurate measuring stick. There is only one standard by which we will ultimately be measured, and that is the measuring stick of Christ. Again, as our verse says, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Jesus is whom God measures us by, and the one in whom we are to measure ourselves by. And I know that when we measure ourselves by Christ, it can be a little discouraging. Yet this is the only realistic measure we can go by. You see, as we read the Gospels and we gaze at this man, Jesus Christ, the picture will become clear of what maturity in Christ is intended to be because he is the measurement of our maturity. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it.
We cannot know Christ unless we are following him. And we will never know him without that. For it is a process of growth. We are told in verse 15 of Ephesians 4, rather speaking the truth in love, we are grow, to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. God bless, and I hope everyone has a very blessed day. Music